Okay, I wanted to provide an update for the strawberry varieties for the state. Strawberry is probably the uh, second most popular crop in the state, uh, second to peaches. Uh, but uh, And there has been increased interest in production of strawberries, but for a variety of reasons, um, we've uh, there's been some uh, bit of uh, hesitancy amongst the growers. For one, it's uh, cited as being too difficult or expensive. And, uh, you know, in having made all of the investment, uh, there still may not uh, be the production of a, of a, of a uh, crop in order to make a, a profit. So uh, as we know, the most, uh, the, the best way to ensure a, a viable crop is to plant uh, just to plant uh, varieties that are well adapted. Uh, first of all, to use crops that are well adapted and varieties or cultivars within that crop uh, that are well adapted to the area. So there's a, there's great need in technological advancements uh, and variety selection, uh, variety development, uh, be that strawberry or regardless of the crop that you're growing. And there are few with document uh, with the documented adaptability to our area. Camarosa is the big. Uh, variety that we have it is it has global adaptability um, but uh, but there are it does have its issues there is just a need for other varieties and um, uh, varieties are the most one of the most important decisions that uh, you're going to make um, in variety in uh, uh, crop production so the objective of this study and all of our variety trials is to improve strawberry production uh, by introducing new, better adapted strawberry varieties um, to improve the uh, specialty crop market in the state. And I want to start off by uh, providing a list of the varieties. We looked at 12 varieties. Uh, this, this trial has been going on um, for about five years, uh, not, not with all of the same varieties here, uh, but uh, we, we have our Albion, which is a day neutral, is the only day neutral in the trial this year. Uh, again, Camarosa, developed by UC Davis, and our uh, and Camino Real, uh, which is a, a variety that uh, growers are uh, becoming familiar with this year because uh, Camarosa wasn't available. Camarosa is our market standard. Uh, it wasn't uh, as available this year, so many growers had to uh, depend on Camino Real, and um, I will talk about how it's done. And Chandler, our other variety, uh, our other our former. Um, uh, market standard. And you can see some of the others. Uh, one I wanted to mention Rocco and Liz. Those are two that were developed by NC State. Uh, we're I'm glad, uh, glad to have those in again this year. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we did, uh, we um, experimental plots that we had, they were all replicated uh, uh, four times. And uh, each experimental, experimental plot was about 20 feet long. And that contained about 34 plants per plot, which resulted in a, a, in a uh, per acre um, plant number of about well, over 12,000. And we planted these on the 23rd of October in, of last year. And we planted on double staggered rows. And again, um, 23, uh, 12,000 plants per acre, uh, randomized complete block design. You can see our our double staggered row uh, hole puncher, uh, hole punching wheel there. Uh, it also, as the holes are being punched into the plastic, uh, there's also some water uh, with a little bit of uh, a fertilizer um, entering the planting hole as well. We harvested this year, we harvested uh, between uh, April 7th and May 18th. Uh, we harvested 12 times. Uh, we did use row covers back uh, prior to the event, the, our freeze event in February 15th, and those covers remained on the uh, strawberries for about two weeks. And uh, this is, you hear our results. Uh, this is looking at the total barkable yield uh, uh, per acre for our, our strawberries. And as you can see, uh, Camarosa, as we would expect, is still um, up towards the top, but we have a new variety, uh, at least new to us, uh, Fronteras. Uh, it's a variety that was produced by UC Davis and uh, it, it was uh, did pretty well this year. And I, I would like to be able to include it in our trials next year. 
And again, our Camino Real, uh, the variety that uh, a number of our growers had to depend on this year, uh, did, uh, did quite well. It was very comparable to Camarosa as in previous years. Uh, but we uh, look at uh, Rocco, uh, the rock, the yield of Rocco is it's it's a little bit, bit diminished when compared to the others. Uh, but Rocco was bred to be an early variety and it is uh, uh, it was meant to be a replacement for Sweet Charlie. And uh, it, it, it does uh, does quite well. It, it has a, the production of something that's on par with Camarosa for that time of the season. And another important variable we looked at is the uh, individual berry weight. As you can see, Fronteris, again, it was the number one uh, yielder, and uh, Fronteris was the largest berry. Uh, the, we, the mean size of the berry was at 20, a little over 27, almost 27 and a half grams per berry. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty large berry, and that's not the largest berry. Of course, we had some larger, it, it ranged from uh, a little bit over uh, 30 grams, uh, maybe 33 grams, I think, uh, some of the larger berries that we saw out there. Uh, and then we can we notice our, our market standard Camarosa at 21 and a half grams, uh, followed by Camino Real at 19.8, roughly almost 20 grams per fruit. And I was a little bit, uh, a little bit surprised that uh, Camino Real uh, came in at that uh, at, at, at that size because early on it looked it appeared that Camino Real was producing some pretty large berries consistently so uh, but the the data doesn't lie so um, there you have it um, but uh, out of all of those varieties what I wanted to do is focus on on our overall top performers and that's again our market standard Camino uh, Camarosa and uh, Camino Real, which is uh, gaining in popularity, and Fronteras. And I didn't mention Ruby June. That's another variety that a lot of growers uh, are, are interested in. Uh, it's been my opinion that uh, you know a number of the growers either love Ruby June or or hate it. And um, but I, I think it is growing in popularity. Uh, I don't have it pictured here, but we'll discuss that after. Uh, and I just wanted to have this graph here really just to show you uh, what happened during the season and uh, you know, where were these yields at, you know, in, um, according to the weeks of harvest. And so you can see we had a, or at least we were, it appeared that we were coming off of a peak uh, at, at the, our first harvest, April 7th. Um, and we, and it's really, Odd this year uh, because we had a we had a really big start and we never really recovered in our trials. Uh, we did have a, a peak, another peak, as you can see. Uh, we so after that harvest, we had a uh, just a really a pretty significant decline, and all of the varieties um, performed that trended that way. And you can see the um, the dotted line here is our uh, average average uh, yield for across all berries. And um, Camino Real and the gray, and I, I hope you can see these, these, these colors here, these lines, but, and Fronteras and uh, Camino Real, uh, Camarosa. You can see Camarosa appears to be a little bit earlier than Fronteras and, uh, and it's comparable to Fronteras in marketable yield. And again, Camille Real, uh, it uh, is uh, more similar, I, I'd suppose, to Camarosa in terms of, uh, of uh, earliness. And I also wanted to uh, take a look at what was going on during the week as we, as is pretty common or pretty typical, is that we start off with some big berries. And as the season progresses, we, we the berries start to tend uh, towards the smaller berries. And that's because we, when we start our primary flowers when we begin, uh, those are larger flowers. And so larger flowers typically mean a, a larger berry. And uh, we can see that uh, the, the berries started off here and we did actually see uh, somewhat of a peak 
in the berry size, uh, but it did, again, it did start to trend down uh, to smaller berries as we, as we approach the end of our, our, our harvests. So and I wanted to focus on specific varieties, and this is Fronteris. It, it produces really large berries, conical shaped berries. Uh, the largest berry that we had, uh, as I mentioned, was about 32 grams. Uh, the the, uh, it, it, the maturity is a little bit later than Camarosa. Uh, the plant size, in, in terms of the plant, the plant is similar in size to Camarosa. Uh, Camarosa does have a, it's a, a large plant. And the berries, the berries sort of had a uh, almost, for lack of a better word, the, 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 the color of the redness was almost, it tended to be a little bit fluorescent red. It was uh, just a kind of a, an extra brilliant red. It can't really, it wasn't really captured in this picture right here, uh, but we, you really see it in the, uh, you really see it in the field. Uh, it is a sweet berry. It was a pretty pleasant berry, uh, pretty taste, uh, pretty pleasant tasting berry. Uh, it had a little bit of tartness. Now, moving on to Camino Real, uh, the variety that the growers had to depend on this year. Uh, and the, uh, I, out of all of the growers, I think one was not completely satisfied with Camino Real. Uh, I've heard after that, other than that, I've heard nothing but good things about the variety. It is a large, it produces a large berry typically. And I, I, that kind of probably seems to suggest to me that, uh, what we were seeing in the field and the numbers that we're actually getting for the berry size, uh, that may suggest that we have quite a bit of variability in the in the in the berry in the individual berry size. Uh, but uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, it really seems to in the field that really seem to produce some uh, fairly large berries consistently. And it, it is a berry that is similar Camarosa. And uh, you know it, it it was favorable to most growers, and it has a, a pretty, a fairly pleasant taste. One of the the downsides of of this berry is that, uh, and the growers really didn't point this out uh, that they they were quite pleased with it. But uh, it it has a reputation for not being quite as flavorful, not being quite as sweet as some of the others. Uh, but we found that you can improve uh, that if if the berries are are. Uh, harvested when they're uh, really red, but uh, you know this is it's not very uh, pretty, not a simple thing to do really when you're in the field, especially in a U pick operation, uh, when uh, customers are you know they're finding red berries and they and they pick them. Uh, but if this berry is left on the plant a little bit longer, you can improve on the sweetness uh, and the flavor of the berry. Uh, and that brings us to Camarosa. Uh, it, it had a maximum berry size of a, a, a 22 and a half. Uh, it was the, a, a top yielder again this year. And it uh, has a, a pretty, uh, an excellent flavor. It's, it's few can match it. There are some in the trials that have um, surpassed, I think, Camarosa in flavor, but uh, it does have an excellent flavor. And it is a, a excellent yielder, a fairly consistent yielder. Um, it, it's usually in the tops every year, and that's, that's why it's the market standard. And the the added uh, variety I uh, wanted to talk about was Ruby June. Uh, it, it it was a variety of much discussion early on. As I said, it, at least early on, a lot of the growers they they either loved it or they hated it. Uh, we think that there's probably something to do with uh, fertility. So varieties vary in terms of, um, uh, of their uh, nutrient uh, requirements, particularly nitrogen. And so um, these might be a higher feeder or it may not require as much nitrogen um, there, but there, there is developing information out there on varieties um, and their, um, their nutrient uh, requirements. Uh, this is a variety bred by Leston Canyon. Um, and uh, this is a uh, I mean, it, it, it is, I, I think it's a, a fairly good variety. It is slightly earlier than Camarosa in our trials. And one thing about this berry is uh, the plant, at least, it's a, a medium-sized plant, but the, 
it, it has a tendency to produce these really large fan type leaves. And that's one of the, the, the things that sort of uh, stuck out to me. Uh, the, the berry is a very good tasting variety. It's, it was, I found it to be very sweet, a very flavorful uh, berry. And some of the growers uh, expressed the same um, uh, set the, yeah, same things in terms of the quality of Ruby June. Oops. So, well, that brings us to the end of the presentation. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be uh, happy to entertain them.